This is a CBS News update. I'm Mary Calvi. And happening now, delays, congestion, cancellations have become the new normal for the New Jersey transit system. So Governor Phil Murphy ordered an audit of the transit agency back in January. The goal to identify problems, change policies, and increase accountability. Here are some live pictures as Governor Murphy gets ready to announce the results of the audit at the Metuchen train station. We'll be streaming this live on CBSNewYork.com. And police are looking for a man who they say followed a woman into a Manhattan apartment then attacked her. Investigators say the suspect followed the victim into the building near East 20th Street and Avenue C around 8 o'clock Monday morning. They say he trailed her into an elevator and began to grope and kiss her. When the victim ran from the elevator, she says the man tried to drag her into a stairwell where he got on top of her and choked her. She says she started screaming and the suspect ran off. Now to Hurricane Michael making its way to the U.S. First hitting Cuba's western coast with powerful winds and torrential rains flooding streets and toppling power lines. This morning, the Gulf Coast is bracing for the storm, which could strengthen to a Category 3 hurricane when it makes landfall tomorrow. States of emergency are in effect for Florida and Alabama. Officials ordered mandatory evacuations for three counties in Florida, and they activated more than 1,200 National Guard troops. So let's turn things over now to Elise Finch with a look at Michael's path and when it could impact us, at least. Well, Mary, yeah, so let me step out of the way here. This is what Michael looks like on our Vortex satellite and radar, so you can see it's a large storm, and it is powerful. It's actually just gained a little bit more strength. Still a Category 2, but a stronger Category 2 hurricane with 110-mile-an-hour sustained winds. Right now, the center of circulation is 360 miles south of Panama City, Florida, moving north at 12 miles an hour. So this is the latest track. So you can see, as you mentioned, strengthening to a Category 3 storm. We expect it to be a Category 3 at this point when it makes landfall in Florida tomorrow. Quickly, it starts to weaken, but of course, as we follow this track, you'll notice now the track does uh, go south of our area, south and east. However, it's a huge rainmaker. At the same time, a cold front will be coming across the area, helping to steer it away from us, but it will be tapping into that moisture. So we are expecting to see some rain, heavy rain potentially, uh, from Michael on Thursday. Right now, we started out with some drizzle today, but we'll actually see some clearing skies as we head into the afternoon. We'll get a few breaks in the clouds, see a little bit of sunshine. 78 degrees, the forecast high today, so it is a warm one. It's also quite humid, so that 78 will feel a little warmer for a good portion of the area. Tomorrow, more of the same, feeling more like summer than fall. Mary? At least, thank you. This morning, we are remembering the victims of the terrible limo crash in upstate New York. They were newlyweds, athletes, and parents. One was an Army veteran. One was a teacher. Four of them were sisters out celebrating a birthday. Investigators say the limo failed to state inspection last month, and the driver did not have the proper license. Passengers were texting and posting on social media from inside the limo before the crash. Now, investigators want to talk to anybody who was in contact with them. Last night, a vigil was held to honor those killed in the crash. CBS News' Jessica Layton has more from Amsterdam, New York. They filled the bridges and the banks overlooking the Mohawk River in this small upstate New York City by the thousands. We are crushed with you. We are crushed for you. Everyone knows somebody that's impacted the whole community. Candles were shining bright during the unimaginably dark time. 20 people killed when a limousine crashed in Schoharie, New York. My heart is just sunken so far down, and I'd, I've never felt this before. Karina Halsey's sister Amanda was in the limo with boyfriend Patrick Cushing, who worked for the New York State Senate, and a big group of close friends on their way to a brewery in Cooperstown. She texted me around 12.55 p.m. saying that they ha were getting a limousine to go to Oma Gang. It just really hurts. I don't understand how it happened or why it happened or why why this was able to happen. Four sisters along with three of their husbands were also killed in the crash. That means Linda and Tom King, who live here, lost seven precious family members. He doesn't know how to recover from this. And how You can't wrap your head around it. You just can't. The gathering Saturday afternoon was to celebrate Amy King Steenberg's 30th birthday, a party planned by her new husband, Axel Steenberg. The couple just married this past summer. Everyone is heartbroken. Sixth grade reading teacher Abby Jackson also died. Some of her students and their parents were in the vigil crowd in search of comfort. I think it turned it upside down to lose a teacher, a family member, 
a best friend. This is terrible. A far reaching tragedy testing the faith of this tight knit community. How can God take away so many people at the same time? Um, and leave kids without parents. And now begins the very painful process of planning funerals for all these victims. The King family tells us they're hoping to do one big service for the four sisters killed along with their husbands, saying they can't handle more than one funeral. Reporting from Amsterdam, New York, Jessica Layton, CBS 2 News. New York State is now making moves to shut down the limousine company. That comes as NTSB investigators are working to figure out if the limo's extensive modifications contributed to that tragic loss of life. Investigators say they now have the airbag control module, which acts as the limo's black box. They hope that will give them new information about what happened in the moments before the limo drivers failed to stop at the stop sign. CBS2 has learned the company Prestige Limo of nearby Saratoga Springs pulled four vehicles out of service after failing inspections over the past two years. The governor has said the limo's driver did not have the appropriate license to operate that vehicle. Investigators say they want to make sure there's not a more widespread issue in limos that have been extended to accommodate more passengers. We want to make sure that uh, the vehicle, um, when it was converted, that, that was uh, the conversion was conducted in accordance with federal regulations. The company has now taken its fleet off the road. Winter is just around the corner, and even though we have some time before snow starts to fall, the New Jersey Transportation Department is already preparing. CBS News' Jenna D'Angelo has got an exclusive look at what it takes to be winter ready with the DOT. Swapping out sun for snow? That's coming sooner than some may want to admit. But others, like Eugene Montagna, look forward to the winter. <laughs> I guess you could say that. Montagna is a highway operations technician with the New Jersey Department of Transportation. Among hundreds of DOT employees taking over this lot at Island Beach State Park to prepare for its busiest season. Mother Nature is unpredictable, um, so we prepare for the worst and we hope for the best. CBS 2 News is the first media getting to see this annual event called Winter Rodeo, a day these working road warriors take part in a series of competitions to test their timing and accuracy on required tasks during a snow event, the calm before the storm. Better to do it now and work the kinks out rather than the first snowstorm where we'll be fumbling all over each other. Here, crews are being timed to put a blade on a snowplow, using wood right now for safety. Other events include a truck inspection and repairing a traffic light, which is a year-round task. While this day may seem like fun and games... We consider ourselves New Jersey's first, first responders, because the roads aren't open, then fire department, police, ambulance, they can't get to where they need to go. So we take our job very seriously. The New Jersey DOT has more than 13,000 lane miles of roads, including ramps and shoulders, to keep passable at all times during winter weather. During a statewide weather event, there can be more than 2,000 pieces of snow fighting equipment operating. It gets dangerous out there with the traffic. So these drivers get revved up for the season by riding through a course that mimics the roads. Here, there are different stations to represent different situations plow drivers may encounter during a snow event. For example, the one behind me is all about navigating around parked cars. So what is it like driving a big rig? All right, here goes nothing. There you go. They offered me a spontaneous spin at the wheel. So you got to navigate around these cones here? Yep. The massive truck is bigger than I expected. The plow out front, hard to gauge. I'm trapped. Yep, now you got to back out. Back out. Add snow into the mix, it would be even more intimidating. Am I hot? Obviously, this is best left to the pros. And even though we may be in denial that snow is coming, these folks are working hard, preparing now to keep us safe. Well, bad news if you fly coach on American Airlines. New policy at the airline means economy. Passengers flying within the U.S. could be stranded longer after a delayed or canceled flight. Americans management told agents not to rebook stranded economy travelers on competing airlines, except in special circumstances. The airline did not set a limit on how long those passengers must wait for a seat on another American flight. But that's not the case for first class ticket holders or people near the top of their frequent flyer list. Agents have been told to to get them to their destinations quickly, even if that means putting them on a rival airline. And that's your CBS2 News update. I'm Mary Calvi. Have a good day.